Welcome to Smashing UK's Top 10 Best Picture Nominees That Lost the Oscar. This list solely focuses on those films that received the Oscar nomination for Best Picture, but were unfortunate enough not to win the award. Number 10, Fargo. Oh, f it, I don't have to talk either, man. See how you like it. Just total f***ing silence. Two could play at that game, smart guy. We'll just see how you like it. Whilst it won two Oscars, the Coen Brothers' dark comedy Fargo was arguably the more suitable candidate for the Best Picture Award over Anthony Mangella's The English Patient. A violent, quirky and darkly funny film, Fargo delivers an original crime story and has an amazing performance from Frances McDormand, which went on to win one of the Oscars. And here you are. And it's a beautiful day. Well. Number nine. Raging Bull. The Bronx Bull, the Raging Bull. Let's hear for the great Jake LaMotta, ladies and gentlemen. Whilst Ordinary People is a good film, it was surprising that the Academy went with two straight intimate family dramas in a row after Kramer vs. Kramer won the previous year. Raging Bull is definitely Scorsese's best film of the 1980s, if not one of his all-time greatest films. Raging Bull remains a monumental achievement and proves to be one of Robert De Niro's best performances, resulting in him winning an Oscar for Best Actor. All right, go ahead. You want me to hit you? I want you to be with everything you got. I want you to f***ing lay me out. Go ahead. You sure? Yeah. Go ahead. Harder. Yeah? You throw a punch, I can take it up the ass. Come on. <clears throat> Harder. 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 That's hard! What the f***? What do you take want? Number eight, Citizen Kane. The film that is commonly regarded as one of the greatest films ever made, and yet it still lost out on the Oscar to John Ford's How Green Was My Valley. Whilst John Ford's 1940s drama is a highly regarded film, it is no Citizen Kane, the film that won just one Oscar out of the nine it was nominated for. Now in complete control of the government of the state, I made no campaign promises, because until a few weeks ago, I had no hope of being elected. <laughs> Number seven, Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here, this is the war room. In 1965, members of the Academy were asked to decide if Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove, a black Cold War comedy, was better than George Cocker's sweeping film of My Fair Lady. Unfortunately, the latter won. Whilst it is a shame that none of Kubrick's films ever won a Best Picture Oscar, despite three of them being nominated, it is equally a good thing as his films are so unique, meaning that they don't conform to fit in a group of about 80 other films. Of course it would be absolutely vital that our top government and military men be included to foster and impart the required principles of leadership and tradition. <laughs> Number six, It's a Wonderful Life. What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, all right? I'll take it. Frank Capra's much-loved Christmas classic was unfortunate enough to lose four of its five Oscar nominations to William Wyler's drama, The Best Years of Our Lives. Capra's fantasy drama is an inspirational, thoroughly festive film that has much more to it than feel-good sentimentality. Whilst The Best Years of Our Lives stands as being one of the greatest films of the 1940s, It's a Wonderful Life is a film with values of compassion, loyalty and self-respect. Look Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right. And a boy clown. Number 5, Saving Private Ryan. Steven Spielberg's amazing war epic is an Oscar-worthy film for the opening sequence alone. A 
terrifying and visceral recreation of the Normandy landings on D-Day that show the true horrors of war. Whilst it did win five Oscars, there should have been no question that Saving Private Ryan should have won the award instead of the overrated romance comedy flick, Shakespeare in Love. Number four, Goodfellas. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Winning only a single Oscar for Joe Pesci's performance, Goodfellas should have been Scorsese's gateway to his first Oscar, but unfortunately it lost to Kevin Costner's Dancers with Wolves. He would then have to wait another 16 years before he finally received his Best Director Oscar for The Departed. First time director Kevin Costner claimed both Oscars for Best Picture and Director over Scorsese's gangster epic, which in many people's eyes was a poor decision from the Academy. It was revenge for Billy Bats. And a lot of other things. And that's that. And there was nothing that we could do about it. Bats was a made man and Tommy wasn't. We had to sit still and take it. It was among the Italians. It was real greaseball shit. They even shot Tommy in the face, so his mother couldn't give him an open coffin at the funeral. Number three, Taxi Driver. Hi. I'd like to volunteer. Great. I'll take you right over That's here. That's all right. I'd rather volunteer if you don't mind. Martin Scorsese's brilliant and disturbing film about isolation in grimy 1970s New York City is a seminal film of its era and contains one of cinema's best performances from the extremely talented Robert De Niro, who played the unhinged and violent Vietnam veteran Travis Bickle. The film it lost to was that that tells the story of Rocky Balboa. Whilst Rocky is an amazing film in its own way, it should have been no match for Scorsese's dark crime drama. You talking to me? Well, then who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. Number two, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Spielberg's critically acclaimed and highly regarded action-adventure flick was the first in the entertaining Indiana Jones series and is possibly one of the greatest films to have graced the screens in the 1980s. So how this film lost out to Best Picture over Chariots of Fire is a mystery. Whilst Chariots of Fire is a good film, it is largely inferior to Spielberg's charming adventure blockbuster. Before we reveal our number one spot, here are some honourable mentions that didn't quite cut the list. The Shawshank Redemption. Pulp Fiction. Help me up there. Three or four. Twelve Angry Men. It's possible, but not very probable. I mean, they're born. Star Wars. Inception. Number one, Apocalypse Now. You know something, man? I know something that you don't know. That's right, Jack. The man is clear in his mind, but his soul is mad. Apocalypse Now is the most defining film of the Vietnam War, if not the most defining war film ever made. An epic and strange film that contains one of Sinan's most famous battle scenes when helicopters descend on the Viet Cong to the tune of the Ride of the Valkyries. The film unfortunately lost out to Kramer vs Kramer which at the time was a groundbreaking melodrama, however, as a matter of opinion, it pales in comparison to Coppola's gritty and realistic war drama. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. You know one time we had a hail bomb? For 12 hours when it was all over I walked up. We didn't find one of them, not yeah. one stinking big body. Beautiful Thank you for watching. Any other films that should have won the Oscar that we missed? Leave your opinions in the comments below.